Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we're going to talk about the concept of the fake expert in science denial and the role that the fake expert plays to blunt the impact of actual experts in science. So let's cue up the music and see what we have. Now, in the last episode, we talked about the reaction of the cigarette companies when medical science started to demonstrate a link between smoking and lung cancer. One of the things that they really counted on was they wanted to put forward fake experts of their own that would put out their narrative. You know, the science isn't all in. There are other studies here by our scientists that say, well, there's really not much of a link between lung cancer and smoking. And after putting up these false experts, what they did was they attacked the real experts. Now, we see this a lot in the flat earth. Now, most recently, the quantum erasers and the Nathan Oakleys have been trying to claim that 2021 was the year of the sextant. And they put out all this nonsense from these so-called experts like Brian's Logic and Mitchell in Australia and the Tenth Man that claimed to know something about sextants and as a result said that sextants proved the Earth was flat. Well, people that actually know how to use a sextant and use them on a regular basis like me would go out there and say, well, no, that's not how a sextant works. This is how a sextant works. And I would have a sextant. I would demonstrate how to do a noon sight with a sextant. I would show the math behind the sextant and how it worked and why specifically it only would work on a spherical earth. Well, they attacked me left and right. And they attacked me and then they put out their fake experts again to repeat the same nonsense I had just refuted. Other flat earthers like the late Rob Skiba and Anthony Riley and Mark Sargent like to talk about the fact that they have no scientific training at all, but they wear a white coat and therefore that white coat becomes their cloak of credibility. All they have to do is put on the white coat and they can say whatever they want. Well, had they actually earned those white coats, as I earned mine, they would know that what they're trying to put out is easily refutable and has been refuted but they're counting on their audience not being able to tell the difference between real science and fake science. And so far, they're pretty successful with it. Now, when an actual expert like myself opposes them, they revert to their middle school bully persona. You know, for example, they'll call me El, Al Baba Rooney. You know, these are the tactics of a schoolyard bully. They don't work on adults. They don't work on educated people. But they don't really need to change my mind. All they have to do is attack me and their little groupies consider them a hero. Another thing they like to do is call people shills and suggest that they're in the pay of the powers that be. All of this is designed for a psychological reason, and that is to set up a us versus them mentality. You have the woke people versus the reptilian overlords who are hiding the true shape of the earth and by extension, God. They're making people try and pick sides by demonizing the opposition. That is a technique to unify a group, which is what they're trying to do. They're trying to develop a mass movement or a cult of some kind. Now, one of the things that we've seen recently is that things such as masks and vaccines for COVID are being viewed not in scientific terms, but in political terms. So don't discount political ideology when it comes to science denial. There are some political parties that seem to make that a plank of their platform. All right. Now, to give you a classic example of this attack on actual experts in favor of fake experts, let me relate something that happened on Quantum Eraser's Discord channel. He had put up a report of a conversation that I had had online where I was questioned about what horizon do I use on my sextant to measure the angle between the horizon and a celestial object. My reply was, I don't need to use the horizon for that. There are ways of doing it without the horizon. 
Now, what he left out was the fact that I had actually just done this and had a video about it called Taking a Noon Sun, where I used two different sextants to find my location on Earth within seven miles without using a horizon. But his only response to that was to put up a meme saying that the sextant reads the angle from the celestial object down to the horizon. And apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's just go ahead and play the video of me taking a noon sight without a horizon. Now, of course, here I am taking a noon sextant reading with what's called a link A12 bubble sextant, which establishes the vertical and then calculates the horizontal. Prior to that, you saw me use the Davis Mark 25 to do an indirect reading using an artificial horizon, a pan of water. Now, had Quantum Eraser actually looked at these videos, he wouldn't have made the foolish statements that he made on his Discord channel. Either that or else he was aware of it, but knew that his viewers were not going to bother watching my channel to actually see how a sextant was used. Now, later on, he made another statement, and that is that you normally don't use an artificial horizon for actual navigation. It's used primarily for practice. However, there's no reason you can't use it for navigation. Specifically, you can use it to find your latitude on land. For example, Lewis and Clark carried with them a small bowl of mercury for doing indirect sextant readings without a horizon to fix their location as they explored the Louisiana Purchase. An artificial horizon is perfectly acceptable to use, not only just for, pra not just for practice, but for finding your location on land. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, it's actually more accurate than using a horizon because one of the measurements is a calculated measurement and there's no refraction involved with it. So next time, do your research before you put out memes attacking actual experts, guys. Now, Quantum Eraser's purpose here was not to educate his audience. It was to personally attack me and try and damage my credibility with his audience. Then he could put out his experts like Brian's Logic and Mitchell from Australia to say something more suitable to his narrative and claim that they must be right because, look, I was wrong here. Well, I wasn't wrong and they still aren't right. Better luck next time and carry on, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much for stopping by and visiting with me today. I think as we go on in this series, you're going to just have all these light bulbs go off in your head. Hey, I've seen Nathan Oakley do that. Or hey, I've seen Mitchell from Australia do that. You know, my brother once told me that half the victory in being in a head game is realizing that you're in one. You are in a head game when you're dealing with science deniers, be they flat earthers or anti-vaxxers or moon landing deniers. Having some understanding of the techniques that they use gives you a little bit of ammunition to at least blunt the effect that they have on you. Uh, you may not necessarily be able to disprove things that they say because you don't have the science background, but rest assured what they're doing is trying to manipulate you. So now you're aware of it. Let's learn a little bit more about it in our next episode. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and the bell icon so that you know when the next video comes out. Take care, guys.